Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Vigenhout. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. This week, the Person of the Week features the new athletic director, Brad Koch. Our own Alex Sabo sat down with him. Let's meet the newest member of the athletic staff. So what brought you here to Cabrini College? Yes, I've uh, been in athletic administration for uh, a little over 15 years now. Um, most recently, uh, I was uh, the Associate Director of Athletics at Philadelphia University. And uh, I'd like to think that role has prepared me to be in a Director of Athletics role, uh, which I could be more excited to be here. Uh, everything that I've known about Cabrini College, uh, with its uh, small, tight-knit atmosphere, uh, family-type atmosphere, uh, is really what I was looking to stay involved in, whether it was the Division Three or the Division Two level. Uh, I can identify with the education of the heart, uh, with moral and social responsibility. I think that's important to have that kind of uh, base or principle um, when you're a student. Uh, so uh, working with students and staff alike in an atmosphere like this is exactly what I was looking for. Okay. How are you planning to lead the Cavs 16 NCAA Division III athletic programs with over 250 student athletes? Well, I think it's, it's important uh, to first keeping in mind that uh, academics is first uh, here and uh, our coaching staff, myself, have stressed that. Uh, we certainly want to win conference championships, uh, but uh, we need to make sure that our students are following the academic protocol first. Uh, and uh, I think the second part of that is making sure that you have the right coaches in place, which we do. I'm very happy with who we have currently. Uh, and then to be as visible as possible. Uh, so if that means being in practices, as many games, traveling to some away games here, excuse me, here and there, uh, I think that's all very important. How do you balance family life with your career, especially during the playoff seasons or travel games? Uh, it's it's challenging. Uh, I have uh, two children, uh, a three and a half year old and a ten excuse me eleven month year old boy and a girl. So uh, it's important for me to be the best administrator I can, but to also be the best husband and father that I can. So uh, balancing the time can be challenging, but uh, the time that I that I do have at home, it's important that it's committed to my family. So is there anything else you'd like to add to this interview? Uh, just that I'm excited. Uh, being here uh, close to two months already, uh, this is a position that um, I've looked forward to for some time. And uh, I, I want to continue uh, and, and profess how important it is for our student athletes to graduate and to continue to be successful with conference championships and beyond and maybe get to another NCAA championship, uh, whether it's men's basketball, women's basketball, men's soccer, women's soccer, whatever the case may be. But, um, th that only starts certainly with uh, having the right personnel in place and uh, there's no question in my, mind, in my mind that that's the case. A Plymouth Township police officer was shot dead earlier this week. Officer Brad Fox was on duty for a hit and run crash. He followed the suspect but when he caught up to him, words were exchanged. The suspect shot Fox in the head and the officer was pronounced dead at the Montgomery Hospital. The shooter was killed by police shortly after he left the scene. The suspect has yet to be identified. Fox leaves behind his expecting wife and daughter. Interested in meeting horse riders from the 2012 U.S. Olympic team? The Plantation Field International Horse Trials will be be beginning this Friday, September 21st in Unionville, Pennsylvania. Enjoy wine tasting, over 30 stores to shop at, a mechanical bull, and so much more. You'll also get a chance to meet the 2012 U.S. Olympic riders. That was your trip around the block. Now here's Rob with sports. In Cabrini Sports, the soccer teams lost both of their battles of Eagle Road as the women's team lost 3-0 last Wednesday and the men's team losing 7-1 on Saturday with sophomore Eric Goldblum picking up the lone cab goal. Next up for the men is a home game this Saturday against Cairn University. Women's soccer was also shut out 2-0 by Arcadia University on Saturday and lost to Goucher College 3-2 with goals recorded by freshman Juliana Ardiri and junior Noel DiCiocchio. The team's next game will be played Saturday at home against CSAC rival Marywood University. The volleyball team won three games to nothing against Bryn Mawr College on Tuesday and their next challenge is against CSAC rival Centenary College this Saturday. 
The men's and women's cross country teams placed fourth and fifth respectively at last weekend's Cumberland County Dukes Invitational. They will run next at this weekend's Philadelphia Metro Classic. The women's tennis match and field hockey game scheduled for Tuesday have been postponed, with both, with both events rescheduled for Wednesday. The golf team started their season placing 12th at Monday's Franklin and Marshall Fall Invitational, shooting 325 as a team. In Philly sports, the Phillies have been eliminated from the NL East, being 16 games back with 14 to go. They are four games back in the wild card following Tuesday night's postponed game. Up next for the Phillies is a six-game homestand against the Atlanta Braves and Washington Nationals. The Eagles beat the Baltimore Ravens 24-23 in this Sunday's home opener to start the season 2-0. Michael Vick threw for 371 yards with one touchdown and two interceptions. Next up for the Birds will be a road game this Sunday against the Arizona Cardinals, who also enter this week at 2-0. In NHL news, last Saturday proved to be a very depressing day for fans everywhere, as the league and Players Association failed to reach a new collective bargaining agreement by the 11.59 p.m. deadline. As a result, the league has commenced its third lockout in 18 years with no end in sight. This week's location after the week goes to senior Jeff Young of the men's cross-country team, whose 12th place finish led the Cavs this past weekend at the Dukes Invitational. That's all I got for this, weekend in, for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next week with another update on Cavalier and Philly sports. Now back to Val. This week, Cabrini College hosted two speakers on the issue of immigration. Our own Kevin Bullioni has a story. So I introduce you a very brave person and a wonderful writer, Sonia Nazario. Keeping up with traditions of social justice, Cabrini College invited Pulitzer Prize winning author Sonia Nazario and Cardinal Roger Mahoney to speak to students and faculty in the Grace Hall atrium. Audiences were captivated by stories of individuals and the challenges faced by people looking for a new life and better opportunity within a new country. Misconceptions were put to rest during these speeches and the true hardships of the modern day immigrant were made known. Immigration is a means of creating a new life for families who otherwise would be stuck in a world of poverty and hardship. The life of an immigrant is hard, but the thought of having a better life drives people to accomplish their goals. The speeches delivered by Nazario and Mahoney have impacted Cabrini students in a way they will never forget, and will perhaps take away the derogatory meaning of the word immigrant. For Location News, this is Kevin Bullioni. Now back to the studio. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court has decided to send the law requiring photo identification when voting in this election back to the lower court. According to the Supreme Court, they want availability for alternative forms of identification. Those who oppose the law believe it deprives people of the right to vote, while supporters trust that the law will help the voting process and ultimately protect against fraud. CNN states that the Supreme Court is worried that not all voters will have ID on Election Day. Meanwhile, polls show a tight race between current Democrat President Barack Obama and Republican candidate Mitt Romney. U.S. polls show that Obama has a slight lead over Romney. During this time, Romney had spoken against Obama's administration over the current situation in Egypt and Libya. Romney also discussed bringing Egypt closer to the U.S. by becoming allies. According to ABC, Romney is not concerned at all with the poll situation. He said that the polls will jump around a lot and that he's just looking forward to debating President Obama. At 37 years old, Meb Kaflepsky becomes the oldest Olympic marathoner. He greeted President Obama without a gold medal, but with a fourth place medal that will go down in American history. During the Olympic trials, Meb developed side stitches and fell back towards the middle of the race. His feet began to develop blood blisters, causing extreme pain. He thought to drop out, but instead pushed on. According to CNN, Meb had stated, it may not have been my best race, but needed to finish for the U.S. team. Now here's Christine with your weekly entertainment update. The season finale of Keeping Up With Our Kardashians included a number of bombshells. Perhaps one of the most curious occurred when Kourtney Kardashian gave birth in front of the camera. I've been expecting some footage of Snooki giving birth during the next season of the Jersey Shore, but it looks like the Kardashians have beat the Guidette to the punch. And while Snooki has promised a tasteful scene focused solely above the shoulders, the Kardashian version really goes all the way. Chris Brown's court appearance has been delayed. Brown will have to wait a bit longer before checking in with L.A. Judge regarding how much community service he's performed since he was convicted of felony assault on then-girlfriend Rihanna in 2009. A court appearance scheduled for Monday has been pushed back a week to allow authorities more time to prepare the singer's probation report. Earlier this month, Chris Brown accepted the award for Best Male Video at the MTV Video Music Awards. 
Gold medalist winning snowboarder Sean White was charged with public intoxication and vandalism after allegedly trashing his Nashville hotel room this past Sunday. White also allegedly attempted to attack the hotel guest. The police report also says White pulled a firearm leading to the hotel's evacuation. White was released by police late Monday afternoon and his court date is set for October 10th. That was your weekly entertainment news. Now back to Bethany. U.S. Ambassador to Libya was killed this week by a group of rebels after an anti-Islamic video was posted on YouTube. The video wreaked havoc in the Middle East as it went viral across the web. Outrage and violence spreads across Libya as the video aimed to mock Islam's prophet Muhammad. The video caused tension between those of different faiths who already see each other negatively. According to the Lebanon Daily Star, these outbursts go to show that a religious understanding is needed more than anything right now. While many Syrians are afraid to share anti-government opinions for fear of getting arrested, Syrian novelist Samar Yazbek went undercover to act against the current regime. Police have eyes and ears everywhere, and if anyone were to speak about the regime in a negative way, they would be arrested. Yazbek was arrested numerous times for her outcries against government forces. During one arrest, police blindfolded her and took her to where she thought was a torture chamber. The life-threatening arrest drove Yezbek to write a book about her experience titled A Woman Caught in the Crossfire, Diaries of the Syrian Revolution. Yezbek and her daughter have fled Syria in hopes of a safer refuge. In other news, a NATO airstrike kills eight women in Afghanistan who are out gathering food for their families. Many civilians regularly collect wood and nuts from a nearby valley, completely isolated from government forces. According to the Logman Governor's Office, the valley attracts the Taliban and other insurgent groups looking for target practice. Civilian casualties have slightly decreased since 2011, but still a growing problem. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Bethany Bigenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.